Hey there everyone, what's up? Uh, back today with another impressions video and today we are talking about this game right here. Uh, this is Superhero Generation and this is I of the Vita version, it's also on the PS3. But today we're going to talk about this lovely, lovely little game. And first let's, let's talk about it. Let's talk about what it is. It's probably not on anybody's radar. Um, unless they've been talking to me, and then it's probably under radar. But Superhero Generation is a part of the Kampachi Heroes uh, series, kind of a series. Um, you might, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know I've talked about the series before, because I've talked about games in the series before, like the awesome, awesome Lost Heroes on the 3DS and the PSP. Um... I talked about Great Battle Full Blast, also in the series. But there's a ton of games in the series, and there are all these weird genres. But this is the first game in the Kampachi Heroes series that is a strategy RPG. And, you know, there's been all types of games. There's been platformers and kind of isometric action games and racing games and regular turn-based RPGs and all types of games. It's just crazy the amount. First-person dungeon crawlers. Um, there's been everything except strategy RPGs, pretty much. And this is the first one. And I went into it a little bit on the kind of wary side because the last RPG, the last strategy RPG I played... It, um, related to these characters, it was the Ultraman RPG on the PSP, and if you remember my impressions video on that, it was mediocre at best. It was really, like, super basic <laughs> and not incredibly good. But this one, Superhero Generation, it's uh, Ultraman, Kamen Rider, and Gundam which I might have mentioned, but that's what the Kampachi Hero series is. It's, Kampachi is like this kind of Japanese abbreviation of compatible, and Heroes is Heroes. And it's always these three groups, um, Ultraman, Kamen Rider, and Gundam. Kind of a weird combination, because uh, I'll talk about it. <laughs> there, there are weird things that happen in the game that are kind of strange, but whatever, it works. Um, usually in this series, actually, uh, the stories for the games are always really similar. They're always like, we've been transported to another dimension. How did we get here? We don't know each other. Um, and they're almost all that way. So it's like, I kind of went into this expecting it to be kind of mediocre and to have that same story. And this one doesn't, which is, it, it's interesting. It, it gives it an actually a uh, somewhat interesting story. Uh, it doesn't have the same kind of focus that the other ones have of like hey who are you guys what are we doing here that kind of thing everyone is really focused right from the beginning so and when you meet new characters they kind of just go through the formality of hey we're fighting here let's fight together um they just skip over all the stuff that's kind of the main focus of the other games which is really nice it's actually kind of refreshing for the series um but let's talk about the game itself it's a strategy RPG, which I mentioned, um, and it's based apparently on the G Gundam Generation games, uh, the recent ones at least. I have a G Gundam Generation game on the Saturn, uh, and it's like a hex-based, it's a hex-based strategy game. It's not like this game at all. <laughs> and But apparently the later ones are the same system, and they're made by the same company. But, uh, what is the name of the, the developer is like, Tom Company or something. It's like something like that. Tom. And uh, it's not written on the box, actually, but it's like Tom Company or something like that. And um, they they do the G Gundam Generation games, and the recent G Gundam Gener Generation games are apparently just like this. The play style is similar. So if you've played those, you'll kind of understand how this game works. But if you haven't, let me explain. It is a strategy RPG. It's grid-based, not hex-based. Um, and it does some interesting things. Uh, the strategy RPG elements are pretty much the same as, you know, what you'd imagine in a strategy RPG. You move your guys on a grid, you get in within range, and you attack. Back and forth. That's how strategy RPGs work. That's the genre. 
But this one does some things that um, I think other strategy RPGs don't do well. And there's a lot of recent strategy RPGs that have this problem where, okay, I think Project Cross Zone came out in the US and in Japan and Europe, I believe. So I'm pretty sure, you know, if you like strategy RPGs, you probably picked it up. It's another crossover strategy RPG, and it's got a kind of interesting battle system, but it suffers from like boredom syndrome where like, you know, there's 46 stages, I think, I don't remember, but it's something like that. And they're, they tend to be samey. The same thing happens in every stage, every time. And there's very little things where you have like a different kind of objective to do or something that's like differentiate, differentiates the stage from the other stages you've played besides the enemies you're fighting. Um, and this game doesn't fall into that. It does a really, really good job of making the stages different and making each stage playable in a way that it doesn't feel like the same game. I mean, it feels like obviously it's the same game, but it doesn't feel like the same stage over and over again. And it's really interesting, actually, because the stages are split into... It, there's like three kind of main chapters i guess you could say it's, it's <laughs> three part storytelling that's the uh three three chapters that's the uh three three acts that's the kind of standard adventure story right but you have your three act story here and it's split into each act is split into three sections and then there's kind of a bridge section and you have this kind of three acts that are split between each character type so you'll have like three stages in common in a common rider story and then three stages in an ultraman story and three stages in a gundam story and the enemies are usually themed towards that and the characters you meet are themes towards each group and you get when you're in the chapter you can select between those stages like at will so you can kind of enter you know if you want to do the common rider story you enter the common rider chapters and then you have to do all three you can't switch out after that but so you can, but you can do them in any order. So if you like Common Rider more, maybe you want to use more Common Riders. So you go into the Common Rider stage first and recruit Common Riders faster, and they'll be more, you know, apt to be leveled up as you go through the game. So the way that works is really good. I think like you get new characters all the time. You get new characters right up until almost the last stage. So. You're, they're always introducing new characters and in, in interesting ways too. It's not like you just show up to the stage and there's new character. Sometimes it's like that, but sometimes it's not. Sometimes like you, you um, have to unlock characters doing special quests, or sometimes you have to uh, do something special within the game to well within the stage to get the character to come to your side. Sometimes they're first enemies and then they'll join you. And you've got a lot of interesting ways that that works. So. The game is like really good at uh, keeping things fresh and in staying away from that kind of repetitiveness that games like Project Cross Zone have, um, and it stays away from being bland like a lot of other games, like that Ultraman game was, for example, by you know having. I mean, first it has really nice artwork. There's like. Uh, you know, there's 3D animations for each attack that each characters have. There's, um, and you can skip them. After a while, you'll just be skipping them. But, um, you know, they put a lot of effort into the attack, so you can see all the uh, ways the enemies fight. It's pretty, it's pretty neat. I would recommend if you're gonna play it, I'd recommend watching all of the battle scenes at least once for each move because sometimes it's really cool. Um, and then you have like. This, the maps, those are all done in 3D models, but the maps are like, the icons for the characters are 2D, and they're, sometimes they're animated in these really cool ways, like uh, part of the story, like some of the enemies will do these like cool animations and stuff, and your characters will sometimes do cool animations in 2D, which is really cool. I mean, it re they all look really nice, and I thought like, oh, that's a pretty nice touch. Um, the battle system is you know, your standard kind of thing, as you level up the characters, they get more abilities. So you have skills and you have attacks. And the skills are things like, you know, raise power or raise movement or, you know, there's various things, heal or damage enemies or whatever. 
and you have uh, you know various attacks that have different effects so sometimes sometimes you have normal attacks and then you have attacks that are like pierce attacks i'd say where they they kind of negate some of the enemy's armor and then you have like area attacks that'll like attack a small area and then you have like multiple attacks that'll attack multiple enemies and you have um, attacks that give status effects like movement down or defense down attack down that that kind of thing so you have a lot of different attacks and a lot of they all have a varied kind of attack range so sometimes like you can get to attack positions where you'll be able to attack enemies and they won't be able to attack you it's part of the strategy of the game so forming the team you usually use is kind of based upon their attack abilities and sometimes the items you give them and sometimes how they interact with those items or with their skills to make like a solid fighter there's a lot of uh, of kind of strategy that goes into putting the teams together which is really nice it's it's a much different than you know a bare bones kind of strategy rpg which i was kind of expecting because the game is it's a licensed game i mean it's it's common rider and ultraman and gundam you'd think like it's just like a cash in but the game is like a hundred times better than it has any reason to be like it could have just been a cash in they could have just thrown this together and like threw it out there and people would have bought it because they're fans of those those titles but like lost heroes before it it's spectacular um i'd go as far to say it's probably one of the best strategy rpgs i've played in recent memory maybe ever <laughs> it's it's really good um i can't stop playing it actually um i i beat the game and i've been going through there's a bunch of challenge stages to do afterwards um after you beat the game it unlocks um something they call hell stages which is like um increased difficulty versions of previous stages so like um you can go through the entire story again in the hell stages and they'll be slightly different and there's um you know the, the enemies are tougher they do more damage they have more health so it's more tailored towards somebody who's beat the game already because you need higher level characters and there's a bunch of uh you know the challenge stages have that same kind of difficulty where you have three levels of difficulty you have i think it's normal hard and ultimate is the difficulty levels but each each challenge stage has those and i'm still working through those i haven't finished them all yet because i'm trying to do you know you have to play each one three times so you know i'm still working on the game but i i mean i've completed the main story i'm just doing the after after game stuff but it's not incredibly different there are a lot of kind of challenges there's like a challenge list where you can go through and unlock items and unlock new characters and i specifically went through and unlocked all the characters so i could you know see what everybody was like and i have like there's 35 characters total it seems like when i look at the uh character selection screen it seems like there should be 36 characters there's like one hole in the middle but like there's a trophy for unlocking all the characters and i got it so apparently there's only 35 um altogether though it's you know the character selections are good i don't know any of the gundam characters um there's like gundam double o maybe <laughs> double o riser or something maybe D um there's like the sela v gundam or something maybe the celestial gundams or something and uh yeah there's a bunch of gundams that i don't know <laughs> um there's a bunch of common riders uh common rider um black rx is in there um a bunch of, they're mostly new um, there is Kamen Rider Ichigo, which is the first Kamen Rider, but mostly the Kamen Riders are new. There's like Kamen Rider Wizard and Kamen Rider Beast and, uh, you know, Kamen, Kamen Rider, what's his name, um, Oz. And uh, there's a bunch of newer ones. And it's the same with Ultraman because there's the original Ultraman, but then there's like Ultraman Mebius and Ultraman Tiga and stuff like that. I, I don't really know Ultraman Hikari and stuff. I don't know all of those, um, but I know the original Ultraman. I know Kamen Rider more than any of these, but there are a lot of characters, 35 in total, and you can 
kind of select them at will. You really don't, you don't even have to use some of them. Like after the first time you use them, if you don't like that character, you never have to use them again. Um, you know, the lar the most amount of characters you can have out on a screen at one time is about 14 or 15, I believe, in the biggest stages. And obviously, if the characters die, you can it's helpful to have some that are leveled up. So, you know, you could probably get through the game no problem just leveling up 14 or 15 characters. But, you know, you probably, if you want to be safe or you're not incredibly confident in your <laughs> strategy RPG skills, maybe 20 characters at the most, you could level up and just kind of ignore the other ones. And my team tended towards common Riders, so I had, like, almost all common Riders on my team, and I had, like, one Gundam and three or four Ultramen. So, yeah, but let's talk about another thing that makes the game interesting. And I was saying that there are interesting ways that the game works in the sense that, you know, it changes things up, it keeps things interesting. And it does that in an interesting way, in a way that I've never seen before in a strategy RPG. Um, it gives you kind of goals within the stage. And it gives you, like one kind of goal called a mission break and then a secret break and then those are two things uh the the mission break will usually um opens up like a second half of the map so the map will usually start out a little smaller and then you get the mission break the map will open up to be much bigger and then the secret break will kind of unlock a secret boss in the stage and then after that after you get the mission break there'll be another break called a boss break that'll again open up the map usually a bit more and there'll be a you know another wave of enemies but that's the same thing within each stage but what's interesting is that almost all of those are optional you don't have to do them to get through the game you can you can uh for example sometimes you can get through stages without doing any of the breaks um i've had points where it's like okay you have to defend this part of the the stage for four turns and if you like what happened was I was like well I'll just destroy all the enemies and then I can just wait for two turns or whatever and I destroyed all the enemies in two turns and the stage ended and I just won I didn't get the mission break or the boss break or the uh, secret break and I had to <laughs> and I was going through like trying to get all the breaks so I had to redo the stage and like just not kill everything for the four turns but you know a lot of the times you can I mean, doing that, I didn't get any of the breaks, but it still let me continue the story. It didn't, like, it wasn't a fail state, even though I didn't get those. So you could actually probably go through the game really quickly if you just skipped all the breaks and just kind of cleared the stages at, as you would, you know, as fast as you could. Which is interesting because, like, usually you think, like, when you're doing these kind of secret or, like, goal, like sub-goals within a stage, it, it gives you something good. Like you think, well, oh, okay, if I do, you know, the main goal is to, you know, get to this, get to this area in six turns. And then there'll be like the secret break, which will be like, get to that area in five turns or something like that. And you'll find that like, you know, you get to that area in five turns and, and you think like, oh, I get something awesome. But what you get is like more enemies. <laughs> so like what happens is the... It, it's not it's like it's almost like the game gets your your goal for uh your your prize for meeting the goal is like surprise more enemies that are more difficult <laughs> it's like not it's not like a prize at all it's just like more more stuff huge respawn of enemies or whatever um but that's how the game progresses and it's a pretty interesting thing because it feels like you're getting penalized for doing well but uh you know, in the end, like a lot of those kind of special missions rely on you getting the secret bosses to come out or killing them with a certain type of technique with a certain character or doing this in a certain turn or whatever. So those breaks are an interesting kind of way to kind of change the difficulty of the game dynamically. So, for example, if you're you're weak, you're not doing so well on the stage, you think like, man, if there was a big respawn of enemies right now, I'd be totally screwed well okay then i won't get the secret break or i'll just <laughs> skip the boss break and i'll just kill everything and finish the stage and come back later when i'm more leveled up or whatever you can do that it's a really interesting way to make the game kind of interesting and 
what it did actually was you know because there's a lot of those kind of special goals within the stages you can you'll find that you'll want to go back to those stages you'll want to repeat stages even though it's not necessary uh, you want to go back and unlock new characters and sometimes those goals don't come out until after you beat the stage so you figure like well now I gotta do it again to unlock a, star a new character but it never feels like a slug even though I like some stages I played three or four times um, I felt like Oh, well, it's it's fun every time, even though, you know, I'm just repeating the stage. So the game does a really good job at being fun, even though it sometimes repeats stages. Um, and like I said, it's not necessary to do that, it, unless you want to unlock all the characters. If you don't, you don't have to repeat anything. You can just go through the stages one at a time. No repeats. Um, so, yeah, let's talk about the difficulty the difficulty of the game, it's not incredibly difficult, but it's not so easy either. Um, when I was playing the game originally in the beginning, I thought like, oh, it's not so bad. It's, you know, medium, it's just a regular kind of difficulty. And then there will be some stages where you're like, it's like really tense because you're thinking like, wow, I, how am I going to meet all the breaks in this stage and still do it? How am I going to do it at all? And you have to like really think about the strategy for it. So like there's a lot of elements of strategy in the battle system where sometimes like if you kill an enemy, you get an extra turn. So you have to like kind of work where you have to like maybe send a unit up to weaken an enemy only and then send a faster unit up to attack it and then get an extra turn so you can move again to reach a goal in time. It's pretty interesting. There's a lot of strategy like that involved in the game. And like I said, it helps to build the variety of the stages, even though like it's the same kind of standard strategy RPG system where you have various attacks and various skills. It's a really good game. I like <laughs> um, I've just been gushing about this game for like 20 minutes now. And I don't think I'm forgetting anything. Uh, the music is interesting. It's like a bunch of kind of themes from the TV shows and animes or whatever that this is related to. So it's not for every character though, but sometimes like, you know, you'll pull out your your common writer Ichigo who is like and it'll play the old theme song from the uh from the TV show of Common Rider. So, you know, and it's not like that for every character, but some characters have their own special theme songs when they'll start attacking when they attack. So it's pretty interesting. You get a lot of variety that way. But, yeah, overall, buy this. Get this. I don't care. Um, I, I would say it's really hard. It would probably be really hard to play without Japanese. Um, unless there is, like, somebody who has translated just the, the uh, mission breaks, secret breaks, and boss breaks for each stage. If you had just that, you would be fine to play this game. Um, it's not... Uh, it's not hard otherwise to just kind of go through the state through the kind of skills and things that everybody has it wouldn't be a problem so yeah it's like a overall spectacular strategy rpg um i would recommend this to anybody who likes strategy rpgs and if you didn't like strategy rpgs like uh probably it's not for you but if you're just kind of iffy on strategy rpgs like you've never you you kind of enjoy them sometimes this game will be like something you'd want to play because it's such a good strategy rpg it's like the kind of game that could get you to like the genre i think it's got a lot of variety a lot of characters a lot of interesting things going on and even you know towards the end it gets pretty challenging where you're kind of you know when i got to the last stage i was like really worried that i wasn't going to be able to win <laughs> it was tough so, yeah, it's good stuff. Overall, definitely, I'd recommend this game. I'd recommend it wholeheartedly. It's making It really makes me want to try out the G Gundam Generation games. And I actually bought one on the PS2. And I hope it's similar to this. Because if it is, I'm, you know, what this series has done for me, the Kampachi Hero series, is that it's gotten me to like Tokusatsu and stuff. Not like Power Rangers, but uh, Kamen Rider, I tend to really like now and Ultraman not so much for Gundam but whatever <laughs> um, 
Oh, yeah, that's what I wanted to mention. One more thing was that, like, sometimes the settings are a little weird where you have, like, the Gundam stages are, they're sometimes in space. And it's a little strange because, I, you know, they kind of walk around in space. And it's weird because, like, it's not weird for the Gundams to be in space. It's weird for Gundam Kamen Riders to be, like, kind of walking around in space fighting Gundams. Um,. Maybe not. I'm. I'm not. Sh not so much for Ultraman. It seems like Ultraman would be flying in space for some reason. But um, Common Rider weird in space. That's like. <laughs> that's the, like the only thing that makes like the Gundam crossover weird to me. Like Ultraman. Okay, I can kind of see it. Um, Common Rider and Ultraman. I can see that crossover. But I don't know how Gundam works in there. But there it is. It's probably just because it's a license <laughs> for that. Uh, uh, Bandai Namco owns. Whatever. But anyway, I'm going to end this because I think I've said all I needed to say. Uh, and this video is really long already. But yeah. Definitely, if you sounds interesting, you get this. It's so good. Uh, and I'm going to continue to play it. I've finished um, most of the stuff in the game, but I'm probably going to play through everything. All the, ultimates, all the uh, ultimate level challenge stages and the uh, hell stages. I'll do all of those because I just can't stop playing it. So yeah, that's it. See you guys next time.